part, Dana, thank you. And now, radio host Stephanie Miller and our contributor, Ryan Salam. All right, great to have both of you with us. Ryan, according to at least one of the attorneys here, four State Department and CIA employees, at least four, make sure I'm saying this correctly, are being intimidated and blocked from cooperating uh, with the congressional investigation to what happened in Benghazi. It's not a small allegation. That's right, and it's also part of a larger pattern. Uh, you've seen this in the Bush administration, you see this in the Obama administration as well. You have very aggressive leak prosecutions in the national security space, including, for example, uh, an NSA agent, Thomas Drake, who leaked to a, Boston, uh, a Baltimore Sun reporter that you had bloated budgets in the NSA. Now he's facing potentially very, uh, very stiff prison term. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about aggressive treatment towards whistleblowers in yeah. national security, you're not just seeing it on Benghazi, you're seeing it elsewhere as well. Huh. All right, well, Stephanie, let me, you know, here we are, eight months since the attack on the consulate in Benghazi, as we know. Uh, yet the administration had an indication within 24 hours of who was responsible for the attack from intercepted cell phone calls that they had. We, we now know that. But at this point, uh, you don't have people in jail, you don't have anyone being held accountable, and this does seem absurd. An ambassador was killed, uh, other Americans were killed, and the group that the CIA intercepted celebrating the attack has actually subsequently been paid to provide security in Benghazi. I mean, it is fair, right, to have deep frustration with the fact that it seems no one may ever be held accountable. Well, you know, Aaron, yes, there are some questions and the investigation is not complete, but is there anything that doesn't give Lindsey Graham the vapors at this point? I mean, to me, this is part of this Obama derangement syndrome. It doesn't matter if it's Benghazi, the Boston bombing, Libya, it's always the president's fault. He's always done something wrong. They always demand answers immediately. Do you know how many of these happen on George Bush's watch? I mean, I, you know, the fact is there was confusion that night, and there, were, there was an investigation that was ongoing, and I, I just don't think this is, everything is Watergate There's to that. There's a problem with this line of analysis, which is that when you look at Lindsey Graham, when you look at John McCain, uh, these are two of the three senators who've been calling for an uh, independent commission to investigate what had happened. These are also two Republicans who broke ranks with many of the Republicans to defend President Obama on national security. For example, with regards to the campaign in Libya. These are folks who've been very happy to actually say that President Obama made the right call in many cases. So the fact that they're actually saying now, look, wait a second, we don't know everything that happened. Let's actually throw some more resources right. out this. Let's figure it out because this is not the last time this is going to happen. And given that we still have any arrests, given that we haven't made the kind of progress that a lot of Americans expect, it seems reasonable to try to figure Brian, out piece by piece th what somebody, happened. Somebody at the president's press conference today cited Lindsey Graham again on, you, you know, I believe this one was the Boston bombing. There's always, Lindsey Graham, Lindsey Graham is, is also a champion the of the president's room. immigration He's on reform every effort TV and show much else. Complaining. Lindsey Graham faces stiff challenges in a primary in his own state for actually working with right. the president on many issues. So he's taking a stance on this issue because it matters. Right. It is part of the problem here, perhaps, Stephanie, though, far from the State Department, the administration, or anyone else. And actually has to do with the fact that the American administration, whatever it might have been, Democrat or Republican, is actually rather impotent here. I just want to play what the president said right after the attack. There's an important two words in here. Here's what he said. And make no mistake, uh, we will work with the Libyan government to bring to justice the killers who attacked our people. The two words being the Libyan government, Stephanie, which, which we don't even know what it is at this point, and, and working with them and having to work on their territory may make this impossible, maybe, maybe about the Libyan government. Well, I mean, Aaron, it reminds me of the beginning. Everybody's saying, oh, they said it was the video. Well, the fact is, Aaron, this, this ridiculous video caused a lot of unrest across the entire Middle East. And it may have been part of what started the, started the trouble there. You know, I mean, the fact that they, they ascribe every, like, horrible motive to the Obama administration, no matter what it is, the fact is, I mean, what Secretary of State Clinton said at the time was true. Americans are dead. What difference does it make at this point? What happened when and who said what word? Wait a, a second. We, I, think I, mean, we, I think we definitely know that it wasn't the video. We know that this was a terrorist attack. A, I think there's not a lot of dispute about that. And B, the reason it matters is that our personnel are vulnerable, it, not just there, but elsewhere. And they're going to be vulnerable in the future. That's why we need to learn from this experience. And hold people accountable. All right, well, we'll talk to you both again about this. Thank you. And still to come.